Hey, what's up, everyone? I just got back from hiking and ah. Damn it, it's a tick. I hate ticks. They're the worst. Ah! Son of a bitch, another one. Oof. Oh. Starting to, starting to feel a little funny. Oh. These are, these are probably those mutated ticks that I just heard about. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, I think. I think I can taste the color. Alright, we're all little buddies. By the way. <laughs> oh, the hell was that? I don't like that much. Alright, good vibes. Right. Good vibes. Good vibes. Alright, good, 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 happy vibes. <laughs> Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to VHS on Tape. My name is Keith and on this channel I do movie reviews for horror movies that came out in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. If that sounds like something you think you'd enjoy, hit that subscribe button. Also, click the bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I upload new videos. Well, since it's summer and camping season, I thought it would be a perfect time to check out ticks. Now, for those of you that might not know what ticks are, they are the spawn of Satan. I mean, they're little arachnids that attach themselves to you, usually without you even noticing, and suck your blood. The more blood they suck, the bigger they get. I mean, they truly suck ass. Tix is about a group of inner city kids going on a wilderness retreat where they meet some enormous sized Tix. Tix came out on October 8, 1993 and comes in at 1 hour and 25 minutes. It had a $2 million budget. This movie was directed by Tony Randall. He has directed 20 movies, including Hellraiser 2. Ticks start off with showing a very elaborate pot farming setup. We see that whatever he's using to grow his pot is apparently toxic, or at least it's implied because it's green and leaking onto a tick egg. And the movie is about giant ticks. And because if it was just water, we wouldn't have a movie. Next, we meet Tyler, played by Seth Green. Now, Seth has been busy. As of right now, he has 193 acting credits on his IMDb. For me though, when I think of Seth Green, I think of the movie Idle Hands. I mean, he was pretty great in that one. Now, Tyler is getting dropped off by his dad, who tells him that he's doing this because he wants him to get better. Oh, that's a nice thing. Tyler starts getting the spins while getting a flashback to when he was younger. Then we meet Panic, played by Alfonso Ribeiro. And without a doubt, you know him from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. He played Carlton. And here, he is playing a character that is just the complete opposite of Carlton. A tough, streetwise kid. Which, he actually does do a pretty good job of. The hard part for me, though, is just seeing his face, I kept waiting for him to do the Carlton dance. Here, he's threatening Tyler that if he doesn't make the shot, he's gonna kill him. Jeez, I've never played that version of Horse before. Prison rules, I guess. The guys are here waiting to get picked up by Holly, played by Rosalind Allen, you might have seen her in Sequest 2032, and Charles, played by Peter Scolari. You might recognize him from Newhart. We find out that these kids are going on a wilderness retreat. Next, we meet Charles' daughter, Melissa, played by Virginia Heaney, I believe. She was in The Dentist, and I got the feeling that she didn't really want to be taking this trip. You're gonna hate this trip more than I will. Here, we also meet Kelly, played by Dina Dayrit. We find out that Kelly doesn't really talk. Then we are introduced to Rome, played by Ray Oriel. He was in some assorted TV shows, including Santa Barbara. 
I gotta say, that's a pretty bold move wearing a vest with no shirt. I mean, I guess he pulls it off if you want to see six-pack abs. And his girlfriend, Dee Dee, played by Amy Dolenz. She was in the Ferris Bueller TV show. Then they hit the road, but immediately get a flat tire, and Tyler shows Panic that he knows how to kill ticks. Next, they make a pit stop, and we see Panic rummage through everyone's bags and steal some steroids from Rome. Well, here we meet a couple of locals. Jerry, he's played by Michael Medeiros. He was in the TV show Texas. And Sir, yep, Sir, played by Barry Lynch. He was in Demonic Toys, a movie I'll be looking at later. These two have a really weird relationship. Sir demands on Jerry calling him Sir. Oh, you can call me Sir. And I don't know if it's like a BDSM thing or what, but Jerry does it. Yes, sir. Now, come to think of it, Jerry actually does walk around with a whip for a good part of the movie. So there might be something to that. Now, I didn't really believe the character of Sir. It just didn't seem to fit in to me. But the character of Jerry? Man, when he was hitting on Melissa, I totally bought him as a pedophile. Also, I mean, maybe it's just me, but I definitely got a I spit on your grave vibe here. We cut to Jarvis, played by none other than, hey, Ice Cream Man, or Clint Howard, who is messing around with setting up a bear trap when his pet gerbil gets killed and we get our first glimpse at a fully grown tick. Ugh, they're all messed up. Jarvis tries to find it when it jumps out and startles him, and while stumbling backwards, his leg ends up in the bear trap and he goes down. While screaming on the ground, he looks up and sees Thick egg sacks falling from the ceiling, and one lands right on his face. And I gotta say, I know his leg was in a bear trap, but I still think he could have probably moved out of the way. It seemed like he had plenty of time. The van arrives at the lodge, and in the boy's bunk, Tyler discovers something in their closet. He pokes at it with a hanger, and a couple of premature ticks fall out. We also see that there is another tick egg sack inside of the walls. Then we get a weird commentary from Charles. He's talking into a voice recorder about the kids. The subject's first reaction was one of disassociation. And, I mean, they never come back to this or do it again, so it definitely feels out of place. And just really weird. Next, Tyler and Melissa go for a stroll, and we see that there are tick eggs just everywhere. And as Melissa is going on and on and on about how much she hates it out there... I hate this place. Snakes and... Creatures of the night making all that racket? And what teenager talks like that? Creatures of the night? Yeah, I guess she must have an old soul. As they go to leave, they find out that a tick has attached itself to her back, and after a little struggle, they get it off. They go to tell the adults, who don't believe them, I mean, they never do, and Holly shares her wisdom that- Bugs don't attack unless they're aggravated. Where the hell did she grow up? Sir and Jerry show up to inform them that since the logging mills shut down, some of the locals have become pot farmers, or as they call them, cash croppers. Seriously though, is he wearing an ascot? Then we come back to Jarvis, who wakes up to discover that some ticks are inside of his body, and he tries to find a way to get them out in what ends up being his second worst Tuesday. Panic's dog gets attacked by one of the ticks and dies, but nobody can tell why. Panic decides that he's had enough of the wilderness and leaves. The next day, Charles calls the sheriff to show him the dog. The sheriff suggests that they take him to the vet, and before leaving, asks if they happen to have seen Jarvis, because he hasn't come home. Charles and Tyler head to the vet, and we see that Panic hasn't really made it that far. Here, Tyler also explains that when he was eight, him and his dad went camping, and his dad got drunk and took off, so he was lost in the woods for a couple of days and he's never quite gotten over it. Man, that sounds like a dick now. Well, at the vets, the vet, Dr. Kate, tries to get a blood sample, but she can't find any. And when she finally does find a spot that has blood, this happens. And now this scene has some comedy in it. I mean, the tick is scurrying around the room while they're trying to find it. And when they finally do catch it, after it attacks Tyler's face, they discover that the thing they just squished is a giant tick. The vet suggests that maybe it has something to do with the pot farmers because some of them use an herbal steroid to accelerate the plant growth. Hey, Dr. K, can I talk to you for a second? What the hell? What, are you trying to make me look like an asshole over here? Look, the stuff at the beginning of the movie was green, right? And it mutated the ticks. So 
Sounds like toxic waste to me. But no, you have to come in here with your science and your herbal steroids. Dr. Kate also theorizes that steroids would also make their neurotoxins more effective. So you might feel like you're taking an LSD trip. We then see Panic running through the woods when he finds something on his leg. He cuts open his pants and finds that there's a tick stuck on his leg. Now he's able to remove it, but then he discovers that there's still something under his skin before the camera cuts away. And this is where we get our first glimpse into why this movie's premise is great, but horrible. I hate ticks. I think they're the worst thing in nature. Just the fact that they stick into you and you can get onto you so easily without you even noticing? Now imagine how much that would hurt removing one if they were as big as they are in this movie. Ugh. No thanks. Melissa and Kelly go off fishing and Rome and Dee Dee go off to do their own thing. I'll give you a hint, it rhymes with sex. While fishing, Kelly decides to start talking and immediately makes us wish she wouldn't have. Get the net! The net! Hurry up! Her hook gets stuck on something and she berates Melissa until she goes into the pond to get it unstuck. Go in the pond. And when they do, they come across this. And while Dee Dee is playing hide and go seek with Rome, she comes upon Jarvis's farm and she looks around for her a little bit until we discover that, hey, Jarvis is actually still alive. Now this is his worst Tuesday. He tries giving her the gun and asks her to shoot him because... The tick that's in his face jumps out and bites Dee Dee on the neck before she runs away and Jarvis dies. We meet up with Panic again and find out that the vet was right about tripping after being bitten. It turns out though that part of his hallucination is actually happening as we find Sir and Jerry beating him. Now he gets away but Jerry catches up to him. Panic then proceeds to whoop his ass. But Sir shows up and shoots him as he's running away, along with some flammable containers. The containers explode and start a wildfire. Panic takes some steroids that he stole from Rome to try to work through the pain. Then we see Rome carrying Dee Dee when she too takes a bad trip. Tyler and Charles are driving back and pick those two up. Charles finally decides that it's time to leave. And we see that the wildfire is spreading and driving the ticks towards the cabin. And I really like this shot of the ticks running across the roof of the cabin. I mean, it's a really short scene, but I think it's well done. They find out that the ticks are stopping them from getting to the van when Sir and Jerry show up covered in ticks. Charles ends up letting them into the cabin where they decide that they can all leave as a group. They just need someone to go get the van. Someone comes knocking and we find out that, hey, Panic is still alive. Although it looks like he's not having the most fun at camp. Here is where we're also shown that the giant ticks explode when exposed to fire. Now Panic finally dies, but not before telling the others that Sir and Jerry did something to him. Jerry attacks Rome and Charles acts like he's gonna go help. Leave the kid alone! But then gets shot in the leg while appearing to be walking toward the door. And I think I like that move. Be all like, leave the kids alone and start moving. And so they think that you're gonna go and try to intervene, but really you're just heading towards the exit. I mean, it should psych them out and you should be able to get away. Well, in theory anyways. Here we also find out that Sir and Jerry are the ones who killed the sheriff that the girls found in the pond earlier, like we didn't already know. Then Sir tells Jerry to go get the van. Jerry refuses, but Sir demands with his shotgun and Jerry makes his way out to the van. And in the process, we see that there are ticks all over. Jerry finally makes it to the van, but gets bitten on the back of the neck and starts to trip. He sees the dead sheriff where Sir is standing and tries running him over with the van, which crashes into the cabin. Next, it starts raining ticks, which would be absolutely horrible, and Sir practices the shooting. The group overpowers Sir and Rome stabs him in the heart. Next, Panic's body starts sliding around the floor. Definitely a little Nightmare on Elm Street going on here. And at this point, we're wondering, what the hell's going on? I mean, is he possessed or what? Then we see that there is a ginormous tick inside of Panic's body. Apparently those steroids he took made the tick big and strong as well. He's probably pretty happy that he died when he did though, you know, before he got split in two. And I think this sequence is nicely done. The effects are pretty good and the way it was shot was done well. 
After the tick fully comes out, it goes on to kill Sir. While all of this is happening, the group runs upstairs. Tyler volunteers to go get the van via a tire swing that Kelly was able to get using a fishing pole. Hey, good for him, you know, he's growing. He's matured a lot since the beginning of the movie. But then the swing breaks and Tyler falls to the ground. Then he has to fight his way to the van. He finally gets the van under the window just as the mega tick starts breaking through the door. Rome is the last one out when he gets attacked and Tyler goes back up to save him. Now he fights with the mega tick before shoving a broom that's been lit on fire into his mouth. They all get away and then the mega tick explodes along with the whole cabin. Then we cut back to the city where the van is sitting in a salvage yard for some reason. You know, I'm pretty sure most of the damage would probably have buffed out. The movie ends zooming in on a tick egg sack that survived the fire. Now obviously they were hoping this would be a lead off for a sequel, which they never made, but I kind of wish they did. I want to talk about the effects for a second. Doug Bestwick did all the special effects for this movie and I think he did a great job. I mean, he has done effects work on movies such as Evil Dead 2, Beetlejuice, and Star Wars Episode 5. And these effects were spot on. I mean, this kind of work is why I love practical effects. I really can't say enough good things about the special effects in this movie. I tip my hat to you, Mr. Bestwick. And now for some fun facts. They shot this movie in five weeks. Ticks can stay on you feeding for up to 10 days. There are over 800 species of ticks. This movie is an actual depiction of my own personal health. So would I recommend watching ticks? Yeah. I really like this movie. You know, it is exactly what I wanted it to be. The acting overall isn't bad and the special effects are great. You know, I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out for free. In my last video, I reviewed a movie called Shadow Zone, and I'll also put a link up in case you want to check that one out too. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time.